Warning, electrical shock hazard. Disconnect power before servicing. Replace all parts and panels before operating. Failure to do so can result in death or electrical shock. Excessive weight hazard. Use two or more people to move and install dishwasher. Failure to do so can result in back or other injury. My name is Phil Lally. I'm the product service manager for Whirlpool for the dish category. And today we're going to cover the new installation of a new model line we've got out uh, that's going to launch in February of 2020. It's a new design dishwasher from the ground up. So there are some installation differences from what you used to in the past. Uh, we're going to cover a KDPM 804 model today. Uh, we're going to start with unpackaging, so we'll get started with that. Uh, as far as uncrating the unit, there's a dotted line uh, all the way around it. We haven't changed the uh, boxing or the shipping method, so you just cut with a razor knife on all four sides, right at the dotted line. You want to stay within the dotted line, you don't want to go above it or below it. So once you get the uh, bottom of the box cut, just pull the box up, tip it over, and I like to use it as a trash can for all the shipping materials. Now we'll talk about this later, but we'll cover some installation tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. One is there's a couple uh, boards in the shipping base and in the top. You might want to keep those and set those aside. We'll use them if we've got an unusual uh, cutout that's a little bit too wide. We use them as spacers. You want to open up and remove all of the styrofoam pieces on the racks. You can go ahead and tilt it on its back and remove the shipping base. And again, you might want to save these two strips of wood that's in the shipping base in case you need to use them as shims for the cabinet or if they've got a built up floor you can use them as runners to even out the floor. So once you've got the literature out you might want to review on the uh, installment requirements tools and parts page. There's uh, tools that you may need to install it and some accessories such as a water supply line, an elbow fitting, if you buy a water supply line kit, it comes with the elbow fitting. Or if you're not replacing the water line, you still need to purchase a three quarter inch to three eighths inch elbow fitting to connect your old water supply to the dishwasher. Drain hose is supplied with the dishwasher. You also need a power cord. Now this model line has two new power cords as accessories. We've gone away from the old wire nuts in the terminal box to an actual terminal with screws. So the difference in the power cords on the end, on the green, the black and white, there's actually eyelets on it that you're going to put a screw through it into a terminal box rather than the old style wire nuts. So the customer or the installer will need to purchase a supply the dishwasher with the power cord. We have two model numbers or two part numbers. The only difference is the end one has a straight plug and one has a right angle 90 degree plug. All right one of the first things we're going to do is remove the tow panel. It's got two black 5 16 inch screws on the bottom. And then it's got two tabs at the top that it rests in. You just lift up and out. And it's a two-piece tow panel. Tow panel in the front. And then this panel slides up and down to adjust for any unevenness or gap that you may have in the floor when you uh, finish installing it. It's also got a little insulation piece here that just pops out. Another thing that's new about this model line is we now have a drip pan that you're going to have to remove to hook up the utilities as well. It's got a tab on the left and right side. You just depress it, pull it out, and then there's a little orange wire harness with a RAS connector. 
you just push on the tab and pull the connector out. Set this aside for now. This will be reinstalled once we get it in the unit before we put the toll panel on. Now one tip I will give you, if you forget to put that drip pan on, the dishwasher will not operate if the drip pan is disconnected. So the next thing you do is you take the electrical junction box cover off. That's a quarter inch or T20 screw. Once you get the screw out, you just lift up on it with a flat bladed screwdriver. It comes right off and this is the terminal box I was talking about. In the past, our power cord or hard wire came in through here and there was three wire nets. Now we actually have a terminal box where you're going to take the screw out, put it through the eyelet, and screw it back down. So we're going to demonstrate using a power cord. If you were using a hard wire installation, you would do that further on in the installation. You'd have it taped to the floor, so you slide the dishwasher into the cutout over the hard wire, and then you hook it up at that time. But for a power cord model, you're going to do it while you've got it on its back and you're hooking up the utilities, the water supply, the electrical, and the drain hose. You always want to make sure you use a strain relief on the power cord or the hard wire. All right, once you get the strain relief and the nut on it, you can pull the green ground screw out put it through the green ground outlet, eyelet. Okay, we've actually got the ground one hooked up with the quarter inch green ground screw and the green wire. Now you're gonna pull the Phillips head screw out. Then you can go black to black and white to white. And put the screw through the eyelet. There's the black wire, we'll do the same for the white wire. Like I say, this is new. In the past, we've always had wire nuts. 2020, we're switching to this new terminal box. Reinstall the junction box cover. So that covers the power cord. Then you want to route it down the back and out. So the next thing we're going to hook up is the drain hose. And it, with the uh, literature that came in the product, there's a miscellaneous parts bag that will have the anchors that you an anchor the unit to the cabinet, two clamps, a silver and a red one, and two anchor screws. The red clamp is for the end of the drain hose that goes under the sink to your disposal. And the silver clamp goes on this 110 degree elbow end for the bottom of the dishwasher. Okay, for this model line, we've got a new drain port connection. It's on the left side rear of the unit. So you're gonna take your end with the 110 degree elbow on it. You're gonna use the silver clamp. And you wanna hook it onto that drain port, again with the silver clamp. And then just like you did with the power cord, you're gonna route it out the back, underneath the rear leg, just like this. And the reason we're doing that is so when you finally set it up, you're not setting up on top of the power cord, the drain hose, or the water supply. We always recommend a new water supply line when you're ever installing a dishwasher. And there's two parts to a water supply line. One is if you buy the water supply line kit, it comes with the 90 degree elbow. If you do not replace the water supply line, you'll still need to purchase a elbow fitting for the water supply that will connect to your existing water supply line. So you're going to take your brass 3 8 3 quarter inch fitting. You want to start it by hand onto the fill valve. Tighten it as tight as you can get it by hand. If it doesn't screw on really easily, you might be cross-threading it. You want to take it off and start over. Once you get it as tight as you can with your hand, take a pair of pliers. And all you need to give it is a quarter to a half turn facing back. And again, route it out the rear along with your drain hose and your water supply line. Before you set it up, you wanna adjust your rear legs to the proper height for the countertop. So measure from the floor to the underside 
In this case, we've got 34 and a half. The dishwasher comes preset from the factory at 33 and a half. You want to adjust the rear legs out one inch before you slide it into the cutout because once you get it into the cutout, you can't uh, adjust the rear legs. Now you could do the front at this time, but we'd rather have you wait until you get it in there to adjust the front when you get to the portion where you're going to level it side to side and from front to rear. So at this time, once you've done the rear legs, you can set it up. So once you get it stood up and get ready to slide it in, you're going to route utilities kind of like an umbilical cord out the back and you're going to route them through the bottom, rear, or right side depending on where the sink is. And you've got the drain hose, the water supply, and the electrical. Now the hole that's required is only one and a half inches. And a lot of guys ask me, how do you get all this through a one and a half inch hole? You put the plug in first. And then you do the water supply. And lastly, you do your drain hose because you can squish it down to fit through the remainder of the hole. So we've got the utilities routed through that one and a half inch hole now. So you're going to start to slide it in to the cutout. As you're sliding it in, you also want to get the slack out of the water supply, drain hose, and power cord so they don't pinch up behind there. Also in a tight fitting cabinet, you can use a tool like this, some type of wedge that as you're pushing it in, you don't want the blanket to bunch up. So you can push it in as you're sliding it in as well. We've also got a new feature where we have two anchor points now on each side of the blanket to anchor it to the tub. So when you do push it in, it doesn't bunch up. And just go a little bit at a time, pull the slack out. Make sure the blanket's not bunching up on you. So right there's a good position. What we're going to do now is connect the anchors to anchor it to the countertop. Or we can also do a side anchor if you have a stone or marble countertop. Another improvement that we made for this model line is our top mount anchor points have always been in the same location. And you can only put a screw in the wood so many times before it strips out. So we added two more slots. So if needed, you can move the anchors in or out to find fresh countertop. So once you get them in the slot, you just take a pair of pliers and bend the tabs or the ears on the back so the anchors are locked in. Now if you did have the option to side mount it, these anchors have two score marks. And depending if it's plastic or stainless tub, you score and break off the tab, for example right here, and you'd move that anchor to the side, which lines up with a hole. So when you slide it in the side anchor, the screw goes through the hole, through this hole, and into the side of the cabinet. So once you get the anchors in there, you can slide it into where it's flush. You want to line it up with the cabinet doors or flush with the countertop. And then now is the time where you want to adjust your front legs. There's a couple options on the legs. You can use a crescent wrench at the bottom of the leg or a seven millimeter Allen wrench at the top of the leg. There's a hole in the middle of it and you can turn it from the top or use a wrench from the bottom, whatever you prefer. So you just lift up on it until it's where you want it and you can just actually start it with your hand to get it close to where it's level. And then from there you can use your 7 millimeter Allen wrench or a crescent wrench to adjust the legs to where it's level. You can visually look at it, make sure it looks good from the top and the sides, and also you can use a level on it. Uh, from front to back you go there, and side to side you can open the door and stick it right on the frame of the tub right here to level it side to side. Now even though you get it as level as you can with a level, you always want to ask the customer if it looks okay to them before you anchor it because sometimes the countertop's off or the cabinets are off 
and even though the dishwasher is level, it may not look right. So I always ask the customer and you can adjust from there. So once we've got it level like that, front to back, side to side, flush with the cabinet doors, flush with the countertop, you want to lightly open the door. Then you want to take the two screws that came in the miscellaneous parts bag and anchor those right into the countertop. Now you've got three holes under here, so you should be able to find a fresh. Okay, once you've got those in there, it's, it's anchored, so when the customer opens and pulls the racks out with a load of dishes on it, it doesn't tilt forward or move on them. Warning, electrical shock hazard. Plug into a grounded three-prong outlet. Do not remove ground prong. Do not use an adapter. Do not use an extension cord. Failure to follow these instructions can result in death, fire, or electrical shock. So at this time, you want to hook your water supply, your drain hose up. Now it's going to, when you plug it in without the drip pan connected, remember I showed you that orange wire, it has to be hooked to the float. Until you plug that in, it's going to beep and go crazy because it's telling you the drip pan's not plugged in. And if you got a digital display model, it will actually say F8 E4. So this is the end of the water supply. I just finished hooking up the uh, water supply. This is the end of the drain hose that's got uh, two different dimensions on the hose. The big one is usually for a garbage disposal, but if you've got a P-trap port, it's a smaller diameter, so you cut it right here, so you can put it on the smaller diameter. And you can use a hose clamp, or if it's disposal, you use the red clamp. All right, so under the sink, we've got the electrical power cord plugged in, the water supply hooked up, turned on, and the drain hose hooked up to the drain port. So now we're going to plug in this drip pan float assembly, that orange wire that you disconnected when you took it off. Just plugs into the back. So once you get it plugged in, it, it'll stop beeping at you now. And to slide it back in, there's a piece here that has to align with this sh uh, shelf on both sides. So on top of the shelf, and then it just slides right in, snaps in. You don't want to put the toe panel on now because we're going to test it for leaks. Now another thing we've added to this model line is a new feature. In the past, the installers to check it for leaks would run it through a short cycle or a rinse and hold just to fill it up here at Washington and drain it out. You can still do that. But for service and installation, we created a cycle to where you do a key dance. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All the LEDs come on to tell you you're in the cycle. And to run the test cycle, you hit the second button that you touched. And then when you shut the door, it will start to fill up, operate the dispenser, it'll shift through all the spray arms in 30 seconds, and then drain out. It's a five minute cycle. If you don't have the patience to wait that long, just run a rinse only. While you're putting the toe panel on, you can just watch it, make sure it's not leaking, and then hit cancel drain, and then do the final attachment of the toe and access panel, the insulation. So while it's filling up and I'm making sure it's anchored well, it looks good, I don't see any leaks. And like I said, if you wanted to move it to the next cycle, just hit start. And that brings on the motor. It's moving the water around. There's no leaks at the fitting or the drain hose. Then you can just hit cancel. And then you can hear it drain. You want to check your connection at the drain line. Double check your connection at the water supply connection that's not dripping. If everything's okay. It looks good to the customer aesthetically. You can go ahead and put the insulation pack it back in. This one goes in like this. It just tucks up in there. And then you've got this adjustable one that goes up and down to cover your gap in the floor. This insulation just tucks up underneath the door. You line the holes up there. 
And then a nice new feature about the tow panel we didn't have in the past are these two cutouts here and the clips. You just clip it on both sides and now it pretty much stays there while you find the screws and line up the holes. So I just start the screws first and I take a screwdriver and push this down to the floor so you cover that gap up and you can finish tightening the screws to lock it in place. Now the last thing you want to do is remove the protective film from the door. Another trick to doing that is if you start to peel it from here, you get these little shards of plastic that end up here and they're not very uh, sightly to the customer. So if you take your razor knife and you just score it right against the inner door liner and the door, all the way up on both sides. It makes it a lot easier to remove that film and it looks much better to the customer. And it pulls off. Now this particular model also has a piece at the top here that you want to remember to take off. It's also got one right here. And then anywhere you see blue is also a piece of protective film. And the same way inside on the handles. So you're all set. That's a complete installation start to finish on our new model line coming out February 17th of 2020. Alright, what I'd like to do now is recap uh, over the installation that we've just done about the, what's new, unique, and different with the 2020 model line that's coming out. We've got a taller tub, the drain hose connection is new, it's got a 110 degree elbow, we've got four new insulation anchor points for the insulation blanket that goes around a dishwasher so when you push it in the cat out, it doesn't bunch up on you. We've got four new leveling legs. We've got a new drip pan and float assembly. The dishwasher will not run unless the float and drip pan is connected. If you try to start the dishwasher without it connected, it's going to beep at you and give you a uh, F8E4 code. Once you plug the drip pan in, you'll be able to go ahead and run it through a test cycle. It's got a new H2O error code, which is a F8E1, that if you forget to turn the water supply on, it's going to tell you uh, to, that the water supply is not turned on to the dishwasher. It's got a new install and service cycle that you can run. It's a short five-minute cycle that you can run while you're checking for leaks. Now, during the video, I showed you an example that this was a power cord hookup and you can easily access it from here, but uh, I also wanted to show you for hardwire, or if you wanted to, you could actually pull the junction box out to give you more access and more room to work with it. You just depress on this tab here, pull it to the left or slide it to the left, and then pull the rear out at an angle like this, and it will drop down to give you a lot more room and access to hook your power cord up, or when it's standing up in the cutout, with a hardwire, it makes it a lot easier to work with the conduit and a hardwire connection. And then to put it back on, just put it in at an angle, flip it up, slide it over until it snaps back in, and you're done. Okay, in this certain uh, instance of this video, it was for what we call a pocket handle, but if you have a model that has a door handle that comes shipped inside the unit, the best time to install that is while you've got the unit laying on its back because there's two studs here, you just slip the handle over it, and there's two Allen wrench set screws that you're going to want to tighten, and it's a lot easier to do it when it's laying on its back rather than when you set it up. Okay, also in the video I referenced uh, during the unpacking portion that you might want to save the boards that come in the shipping base because you may use them uh, if you've got a built-up floor or if you've got an extra wide cabinet behind the fascia board and you're side mounting it. These work great as shims. For example, on the side, if you've got a wider than 24 inch cabinet cut out behind the fascia board, there's nothing for the screw to bite into, so you can actually use the boards to shim it out on both sides 
to 24 inches wide, so when you slide the dishwasher in and you side anchor it, the screw has something to bite into. Also on a built up floor in an older home, if you put the dishwasher in, it's gonna drop down on you, so you want to use these as shims rather than just cutting shims for the back actually use the full length cut them to measure slide it in so when you slide the dishwasher in it's nice even with the floor and you get you don't get that uh, gap at the top because it dropped down on you okay in the installation that we just did the video on i used the power cord but that certain times you're going to see a hard wire or direct wire which is conduit such as this uh, it's basically the same hookup black to black white to white and green or bare wire to ground so make sure you get the strain relief on it and then you just take your needle nose pliers and make a circle with the copper wire, put the terminal box screw through it in the terminal and you're all set. All right, one thing I just want to uh, recap and remind you that this unit has a new uh, drip pan and float assembly that's one of the last things you're going to install before you put the front tow panel on and we want you to run a short installation service cycle or you could do a rinse only. We're just uh, trying to run, make sure we get water in it, the unit's working and you wanna check for leaks before you put the tow and insulation panel on. And that install service cycle is a real quick key dance, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If you're successful, all the LEDs will come on and then you can uh, rapid advance it steps one through six. Step one is drain, step two is fill, step three is wash. Uh, and then like I say, it's a short five minute cycle or you can rapid advance it to whatever portion of the cycle that you want. Uh, and just to make sure we're doing this so you check for leaks.